know what, the, the issue of negotiation, in my view, is also diverse and dynamic, and I hope I can keep your interest for a few minutes as I go through some of the concepts and talk a little bit about how I have managed to shift my career focus from one that was lodged in the adversarial system to one that is now exclusively in the interest-based negotiation field. Um, you know, negotiation is sometimes a misunderstood concept. I think a lot of people still believe that negotiation is something that happens in boardrooms and union halls and closed committees, but the fact is that negotiation is truly a part of our everyday lives. And if we think back even over the day we've just had, I'm, I'm confident that every person in this room could refer to at least one negotiation you've been involved in today. It could have been as something as simple as negotiating, which would not be necessary if it wasn't for the idea of conflict. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about how I think conflict is understood and should be defined in this context, and this is where my little flip chart comes in. Conflict can be defined when we're talking about negotiation strategies as an express struggle between two or more parties who perceive incompatible goals and interference from the other party in achieving those goals. And the word I'd like to focus on in that definition is the method that I would like to focus on this evening is, it's called interest-based negotiation. And I'm just wondering if anyone has heard that term before or has received any instruction on the notion of interest-based. I'll, I'll try to narrow it down just for the purpose of discussion. It's often referred to as win-win negotiation. It's a newer concept that has been developed over the last 20 to 30 years. It started really at the Harvard Law School in the Harvard Negotiation Project, and some very prominent people involved in the project decided that the old methods of conflict resolution didn't really work very well. The older methods are what we call positional approaches to bargaining, and that's basically what we commonly refer to as bargaining. It's like the court system or the union system, where you know parties are basically pitted against one another in a struggle, where they go forward advancing one position against the other without ever really talking about what's important to the individuals involved in the struggle. And what usually happens, and I'll just use the court battles as an example, is that you know one side will line up its warriors on one side and the other will line up its warriors on the other side and off they go into a long and often drown, drawn out battle. What will happen in the end there is that, well, somebody may win, which means usually that somebody will also lose. Or sometimes everybody just gets exhausted and gives up and decides to come up with some sort of compromise solution that really may not necessarily address what was important to either one of the parties in the struggle. But interest-based negotiation tries to put the positions in conflict aside and go behind them and explore, like I said, what is really important? What is the interest that either one of these parties is trying to maintain or achieve? And I'm just going to give you an example um, of an interest-based approach that, if, if you had any interest-based training, maybe you've already heard this example, but please bear with me. I want you to think about a mother who has two children, both around 12, 11 years old, and she's in her kitchen one day, and she's preparing some food, and she notices that uh, in the fruit bowl on the counter, there's only one orange left, and as luck would have it, both children come into the kitchen after school at the same time, and they both tell their mother, I want the orange. Hmm. So there's only one orange left, so the mother is faced with uh, a little bit of a dilemma. And as she is having a busy day and wants to get on with things, her first instinct is to say, okay, I'll just cut the orange in half and give half to both of the children, and then the matter will go away. But she must have been having a reasonably high-energy parenting day because she stepped back <coughs> from that kind of immediate impulse decided to ask each of her children individually what was important to them about having that orange. When she started asking the questions, the first child said, 
<coughs> well, I have to do a project for school, and I could really use the peel of the orange to make a bright background for my project. Which is kind of an interesting response. And then she asked the other child, what's important about this orange to you? And the child responded, well, I'm hungry. I just want to eat the orange. So at the end of that interest exploring process, the mother was able to see that each child, while having a position of ownership of that orange, actually wanted something completely different from the same result. So each child walked away completely happy, having had each of their needs met after some creativity was applied to the process. So that's basically, in a really small nutshell, how interest-based mediation or negotiation problem instead of the why. Contrast it with that, and using the method that I prefer, we look at what really an interest is. And an interest is the need or needs underlying the person's position. It allows for more than one result, and it results in an I win, you win situation. It focuses on the why instead of the what. Now, interest-based negotiation has become very popular in my field, I would narrow it to maybe the last 10 years or so, but whenever as a professional you are looking at adopting a method of dispute resolution, it's very important to have a clear understanding that conflict between <coughs> parties, whether they be in a civil court case, whether they be in a marital situation, always bring their full selves to the table when they are looking to negotiate. Negotiation does not happen in a vacuum. It does not happen in a laboratory. And all conflict and all negotiation has to take into account the emotional selves that the people are bringing to the table. As a divorce lawyer, I deal daily with people in probably the most or one of the most emotionally challenging periods of their lives. Parties in a marital separation are not like parties in a civil or a criminal court case. The people who come to me to assist them in resolving their issues have usually been involved in a lengthy and intimate relationship with the person who's on the other side. Parent of the children, as you know, it doesn't stop just because the, the conflict has been resolved. Parents need to have a relationship to parent their children going forward. But getting into court battles where positional bargaining was always emphasized did little, if anything, to enhance parental the litigation model, which is what we refer to as the court-based system. Each and every case in which I represented people, uh, they shared these characteristics. Firstly, it was very expensive. If a case goes to court in Moncton, you can expect to have maybe $20,000 in legal fees if it's contested and has to take up two or three days of court time or to me and to my clients in these cases. In the court system, clients have no control over how long their cases will take. It can take upwards of two to three, maybe even four or five years to get through a contested custody or marital property division battle. The next factor that I noticed was common in all of my cases, or in most of my cases, was the high emotional cost. When people separate and are going through that difficult adjustment, one expects the emotions that caused concern for me and for many of my clients was that at the end of the day, after a long battle, you might receive a result that either you didn't anticipate or you didn't want at all. And even if you did receive a result that resembled the relief that you claimed at the beginning, even if you won the case, you were so exhausted emotionally and financially, it was difficult to see any result being a victor. There options. I explained that there are several options available. One is the court system, the litigation model. One is mediation. And one is collaborative family law. And I practice, as a lit I practice as a mediator and a collaborative family lawyer. And in both of those areas, I offer my clients, either alone or with a colleague representing the other side, an interest-based model 
that is incredibly effective in dealing with marital disputes. If a client says to me that they're not interested in an interest-based model, or they need to go to court, they don't feel their interests will be protected, I simply refer them to another colleague. But I explain to them very carefully what I think the interest-based model can offer. As opposed to all of these concern areas, I talk to my clients about them, but in a slightly different way. Firstly, that using an alternative dispute resolution method is cost effective. In either mediation or collaborative family law, the clients have control over the pace of the proceedings. They can easily predict and understand the costs that will come, what they will pay for, because they are a participating party in the proceedings. With respect to access and timing, schedule works very well because the only schedule that we have to be concerned with is the schedules of the parties and the schedule of the lawyer or mediator. We don't have to rely on a public system where people effectively line up for service. Emotional management. When parties are pitted against one another, as I've described before, there's no opportunity to sit in a room and hear the other talk about what their feelings are, what their concerns are, what their interests are. Basically, the court system keeps people separated, both figuratively and literally. In a system where the parties are working with an interest-based professional, they actually get to work out communication issues, and it bodes very well for future parenting. I would say that the results are the best part of this process for the clients. As I said, they lost and they just couldn't wait to get back into court. You know, let some time pass and try to go back and change what took years to get in the first place. In collaborative and mediated results, the clients keep out of court almost always because they know that they've made the decisions for their children. They know their children best. So I would like to uh, just kind of leave it there on that note and ask if there are any questions about the process of interspace mediation or how I managed to run my practice.